Hey everybody, welcome back. I want to talk about how to increase your cash on hand, right? And you know, I'm not a financial advisor or insert financial title here, but I want to tell you what we have done here on the Myrtlewood Homestead, how me and my wife have increased our cash on hand. And just to, you know, point this out, you know, we don't make a ton of money, right? We are not rich by any metric at all. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we, you know, based upon how we handle our finances and by the grace of God and by the grace of great mentorship of lots of different people, we have found a way to take our, you know, our income and be blessed by it, you know? And so, like I said, we, um, combined <laughs> are not rich at all, but these are really good ways that we have went about being realistic and creating you know, trying to create as best we can financial security. Okay. And I know there's a lot of things out there, especially on preparedness YouTube that I just find to be extremely damning. Um, I know that, uh, I've been wanting to make this, you know, video for a while ever since I heard, you know, and I'm going to just be honest, you know, because it, I think it's important when the COVID stuff first happened, uh, I, I, well, I was watching Alaska Prepper and he literally stated, you know, he caveated with, you know, I'm not, you know, an expert and I can't tell you how to finance your money. But if it was him and you had no preparations on hand that he actually told people to get into debt, run up a credit card to ensure that you can buy prepper supplies in case you couldn't get them. And I remember him saying that and I remember commenting and I just remember thinking how incredibly, um, I, I don't want to be over overly dramatic here, but I, that that advice couldn't be couldn't be worse for somebody to hear. Like that couldn't be horrible. There couldn't. I mean, it's such horrible advice. Like to please people, don't do that. I, I don't care how many viewers they have. I don't care how many subscribers they have. Don't put yourself in debt just because of fear porn of what might happen. Because obviously, as we saw, nothing happened to the point where it required anyone to take out debt to buy proper supplies, especially at crazy high interest rates that credit cards have. I mean, that couldn't be, oh God, it, it, it shook me enough to where, you know, it, it's something that, you know, I'm going to continue to remember for a long time because you can't just tell people that, right? And so I just want to share my, our story, me and my wife's story with you guys. And so these are seven things that we have done that have been instrumental in changing our lives, okay? And we I know this is gonna help other people. So let's get started with number one. Number one is actually the opposite of what a lot of preppers would do. A lot of preppers would tell you to buy stuff, right? You can somehow buy your way out of inflation and by buying products, you're somehow increasing your cash on hand, which could be further from the truth. The first word of advice that I have and what we did was pay down debt, right? Because that interest rate every fucking month doesn't give a shit what the fucking economy is doing. And that's a fucking fact, my dude. Interest rates don't give a shit. They're going to continue to accrue, and that money that is accrued is money that's taken out of your pocket. So if you want to keep more cash on hand, if you want to have more cash in the bank, fucking get those interest, make those interest rates not applicable. And the only way you can do that is by getting rid of debt. So the most important thing that you can do is get rid of debt. So do the opposite of what preppers are telling you to do. Number two, save money on consumable-based products but do so with empirical use, right? So things that for us, because we're talking about our story, right? Consumable things that, that, that we that we get, that we buy in bulk, right? So that's gonna be, you know, things like toilet tissue, bath tissue, things like that. Um, we buy those in bulk, right? Another thing that we buy in bulk, deodorants, that kind of thing, toiletries, things that I use. I have a cold form soap that I use and that's what I like to use. And so I buy it. I make sure that I have enough on hand because I know that's what I want. So whenever there's a flash sale or something like that, boom, I will then buy more in bulk. But that is empirical. I know I'm gonna use it every fucking day. I take a shower, I use it, right? So I know what I'm using and I know empirically how much I need. I know how much I need to buy it and I know the price. So that is empirical based shopping based upon you know consumables that you know you're gonna use, right? So whatever those consumables are that are empirical, meaning that I can show you how much I spent last year and how much I used, and I can forecast that for the for the upcoming years, right? It's empirical. I can show you that math. And so 
know what those are. And then to further save money, right, look at buying off-brand, right? So is there ability to buy off-brand? Let me give you an example, right? So everybody's familiar with, you know, people, when they think of cold form soap right now, for some reason, they think of Dr. Squash, right? It's, I guess, a cold form soap, and it's becoming popular because of its social media presence. Now, Dr. Squash is expensive. And uh, they have, you know, I use a pine tar soap. I use a real pine tar soap. And the reason why I say real is just because um, the ingredients are more, it's more pie tarny than Dr. Squash's. But Dr. Squash has a pine tar soap. Personally, I love pine tar. Maybe it's just because of my toxic masculinity, but I love pine tar. I think it's great. So I buy a pine tar soap in bulk, right? It's an off brand because, I mean, Dr. Squash is now considered mainstream, even though it's a newer company. But I buy, buy an off-brand cold form uh, pine tar soap that I can get. That's going to be a third, a fourth of the cost of Dr. Squash. So I buy off-brand. Technically, it's off-brand, even though it's his own brand. It's a cheaper brand, and I get more bang for my buck. I, I can pick up a lot more of it. So that's just one example. And you can do that with any types of toiletries or consumables, right? You can do that. Um, and number two, right? Buy in bulk. And then a third thing when you talk about consumables is look at reusable options. For example, people buy batteries, right? Batteries, especially this is 2021, a lot of things that we have are electronic, everything from, you know, our remotes to, you know, appliances, whatever. So if it doesn't plug into a wall, chances are it has a battery. Sometimes it comes with its own internal battery, sometimes it doesn't. But if you are buying batteries for any reasons, whether they're for appliances, toys, controllers, what have you, Something I found early on is to buy re reusable. Now, reusable is a little bit more expensive, but I haven't bought batteries in years, right? I did a big bulk purchase of reusable um, batteries five years ago, and I'm still using those, and I have saved a lot of money by using the reusable. So, um, and now that I can change them out interchangeably with my solar, with my solar systems, it's a great deal. So, um, if you can look at reusable options, look at that. And it's not just for batteries, right? Other consumable options that are good to look at, right? Um, using pa instead of using paper towels, use, use you know, um, material cloth towels, right? I know in Costco, we did, they had an awesome sale. It was like, for like 30 of them, it was like $12.99, something ridiculous. We bought tons of those in bulk, right? So we don't need to buy paper towels. Do we have a few paper towels on hand? Yeah, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But Mainly, we use cloth towels, and we have our own little basket that we put them in. Boom, after we're done, we can throw them in there. And we can use them like we use reusable paper towels, because all we do is we make one, you know, we'll do one wash cycle with our with our paper, with our uh, cloth towels, and we can, you know, use laundry detergent, Clorox, or whatever, and we can clean them. And in case that there is, you know, no power, right, we can't depend on the infrastructure. I do have a 12 watt um, Nina washer machine that I used when I was full-time RVing and that thing is 100% off grid. So I can even wash clothes and I can wash these cloth towels without using the grid using only my solar generator. So we have implemented that into what we're going to talk about next, um, lifestyle, but ultimately look for reusable options. So just to quickly recap, consumables that are based upon empirical data, right? buy off-brand, buy in bulk, and look at reusable options. Reusable options can be anything from, you know, switching your paper towels to cloth towels, using your reusable, you know, not using reusable batteries instead of disposable batteries. There are a lot of different other options out there. Find what's applicable for you and your household, okay? Number three, focus on lifestyle habits, right? So for us, especially when, you know, before we were on the homestead, um, coffee purchases, right? That's a big one. Um, eating out, entertainment. And a lot of these things, you know, it's it's hard. I know for me, you know, I for those of you that watch my espresso machine um, <clears throat> product review, great espresso machine. It's, it's working great for us. But coffee is huge. I love coffee. You know, I, I, I drink a lot of coffee, more coffee than I probably should, but just being honest with you. So when I was first doing the full-time RVing thing, you know, if you just go out and buy a cup of coffee every day, it's expensive. And I don't just drink one cup of coffee. There's no way. I mean, to make it, I would have to do, you know, a triple shot in the morning. And then, you know, at lunchtime, have another triple shot. Maybe I can make it if I, you know, if I was lucky. Other times I would just have to 
figure out whatever drip coffee was, you know, was available or whatever. So that's, that's a pain. And then when I went on deployments and stuff like that, you know, you can be one of those guys standing in line for a human being coffee, you know, you know, there's a human being coffee shop, you know, I remember when I was in uh, Udari and man, that place had long lines, you know? So I learned early on in my military career that having your own coffee is perfect. And I had this really awesome thermos that I spent some good money on that could press coffee directly in it, right? All you need is hot water and you could press coffee at the bottom and you can, after you were done drinking, you can just, you know, dump beans out the bottom. Um, pretty awesome stuff, right? So all people had to do is send me um, coffee beans and I had my own little grinder, handheld grinder. So if I needed to grind down the beans, I could. Um, but that's what I did, right? So this is, goes down to, you know, the purpose of this is lifestyle, right? So when I was full-time RVing, I had a small little espresso machine that you saw and that lasted years up until just recently. And so that is a way that I have found to reduce my costs because think about it, a cup of coffee, I, I haven't bought a cup of coffee, I haven't bought coffee so long. The last time I had a Starbucks, somebody bought it for me. Um, but I imagine they're, back when I was buying coffee, I mean, easily five bucks for, you know, if you get, you know, my favorite, you know, foo-foo drink is a venti caramel macchiato, triple shot. And so if you were to, I mean, between five to seven dollars, I imagine easy. So if I'm buying multiple cups of coffee a day, you know, if I'm buying two, let's just say I'm spending 10 bucks on coffee, you know, every single day, right? So 365 days times 10, you know, spending upwards of $4,000 a year on coffee. And that may seem like a lot, but I mean, I... I you know, if I was drinking coffee out, I, there's no reason why I wouldn't spend at least $3,000 on coffee a day. I mean, that's just the truth, right? So lifestyle, right? Lifestyle choices. So coffee purchases is a huge one, at least for me and my wife, right? So what have we done? We have, have our own coffee machine. We obviously have mugs that we enjoy drinking out of. We have our own thermoses that we enjoy drinking out of. And yeah, they cost a little bit of money, but they, mo they make it so easy for us to use those use those equipment. I'm not saying don't have nice shit. That's not what I'm saying. I think that's actually really good because my fanciest thermos and the espresso machine and then the coffee and you add all the, those costs together, it's way cheaper than going out and getting coffee, right? So that's something else to, that's something else to think about. Eating out, right? Obviously we produce a lot of awesome food here on the homestead. There's no reason for me to go Buffalo Wild Wings because I can make my own chicken wings, right? And I have and I can make good chicken wings too, right? And we have an air fryer here um, that we got as a gift from our, our my, my grandmother, bless her heart. And so we have a lot of food on the homestead. We eat great here, you know what I mean? You know, my, my me and my wife, we are going to have omelets in the morning with bacon and we're gonna have steak for lunch and dinner, right? So we can have bacon omelets in the morning, we can have chicken wings for lunch and we're gonna have steak filet, filet mignon at night, right? That's just how we can, that's how we can live here. But that's because we've changed our lifestyle, right? We don't eat out. We don't go out and we don't eat out. And especially in the times of COVID, it makes it so much easier. Number one, we're out in the boonies. So, you know, there's really no places to eat out anyway, except for, you know, driving to the nearest city. And with COVID restrictions, it's made it much more easy. But eating out, think about those. And then lastly, entertainment, right? I mean, obviously with COVID, things have changed. But, I mean, going to, you know, going on a nice date with your wife, to dinner and then a movie, I mean, you're easily, you know, by the, by the time you're done with it, you know, it's because when I like to go out, I like to go out. I'm not going to sit here and bullsh bullshit with you. You know what I mean? When I go out, I want to go to a nice dinner and then I want to go to one of those fancy, um, movie theaters where I can, you know, relax, lean back in a chair and have a couple drinks. That's just who the fuck I am. Whatever. I'm easily going to spend a couple hundred dollars doing that, right? Just for me and my wife. So the, I'm not saying don't do it, please go out there, treat yourself and enjoy yourself, but just realize that these are expenses. And so looking at those expenses overall is going to help you understand where you're spending your money. So focus on these lifestyle habits. There's, like I said, instead of coffee purchases, we make our own coffee. We have our own, you know, espresso machine. We have our own coffee cups, mugs that we really enjoy. We have our own thermoses that are really nice. And uh, yeah, we spend top dollar on those because we want good quality gear that works and we want to actually enjoy drinking coffee. You know what I mean? I want to enjoy, I want my experience, my take home coffee experience to be better than that, that I would get at a Starbucks. And then by looking at it that way, I've saved a lot of money. We have saved a lot of money, All right? Eating out, like I said, learn how to be a better cook, get 
pieces of equipment that'll help you, right? The air fryer is great. We have a smoker. We have a grill, right? We can do a lot of cool shit here, right? I have a cold smoker as well. So I can literally have people over. We can entertain. We, you know, we can enjoy ourselves and we don't have to sacrifice the, the quality of life, right? I honestly believe I can go out there and I can make a better burger than anything you're going to get in the store. Animal fresh off the hoof, right? I can cold smoke that meat. I can make cold, cold smoked cheeses. I can do it all, right? Does it cost a little bit of money for the infrastructure? It does. But in the end, it saves us money because we don't have to go out looking for it. So lifestyle habits doesn't mean you can't have a good lifestyle. doesn't mean you can't have the finer luxuries of life. We have just found a different way to do that. Number four, DIY projects, right? Uh, from, I personally believe that DIY goes a long way. Anything from handyman stuff, drywall, vehicle maintenance, basic plumbing. And these should all, and you should be doing these things in a way that is motivating you, motivating for you to do it, right? Let me give you a great example. Oil changes. Oil changes can suck, right? What I have done is I have invested and I've bought those little plugs that you can put on the bottom of your cars to make it so easy. So instead of having to twist and turn and do all that stuff, I have spent the money and I've put in one of those reservoir caps that I can just turn and pop out, boom, right? Costs a little bit of money, but it saves me the hassle of getting oil everywhere. It saves me the hassle of having to necessarily lift everything up, right? It's easy. I can get directly underneath it. I can pop it. I can let it go. You know, I have put tools and I've invested tools to where I can make this maintenance easier, right? Literally all I have to do is go back underneath, you know, turn, pop, pop it back in, change the filter, put new oil in and I'm good to go. And I save a lot of money doing that. And so by having the straight up infrastructure costs to begin with, buying that cap, which is expensive, I've saved a lot of money because now it's so easy for me to go out and change the oil that I save money, right? I'm making everything in my life, my lifestyle, and I'm adjusting it to make it easier for me to save money, right? And that's super important, especially with handyman stuff, right? It's easy to do. You know, yes, if you don't have technical skills yet, don't hurt yourself. But a lot of these things you can look on YouTube and you can figure out. Drywall is a great example. If you've never done drywall before, there are some really easy to do on how to do drywall. <clears throat> I've done basic patch jobs on drywall. Let me talk about our last home that we own. I've done basic drywall patches, right? But never anything, never a complete wall. And so what happened was we decided that we were going to change all the plumbing out in the house and we were going to go to this... Um, this, I don't know, like PVC type material instead of the old iron pipes that was there, you know, big, big overhaul, but we decided to do it. But in order to do it, you know, we had a contractor price and he listed the price for the work. What we didn't realize was that he was going to be knocking holes down and not, we knew there was going to be holes that are going to be made, but we didn't know that they were going to then charge us to patch those walls and they had a preset price for it. So we spent thousands of dollars to get all this plumbing done. And then he's like, oh, by the way, we'll do all the pat, we'll, we'll clean up after ourselves and we'll do the patch job on the walls here, but it's going to cost you this much. So it's like, so you made a mess and you made a hole and now you're telling us you want to charge us for it. Capitalism, right? Don't, don't hate the player, hate the game. We said, no, thank you. I wasn't going to spend $800 for them to vacuum stuff up to, you know, broom, you know, and vacuum and put, put up drywall, but there were some significant holes in the wall. So i had never done a patch job that big. So I want to make sure I did it properly. <clears throat> Went on YouTube. I was able to do it myself for a couple hundred dollars tops. These are just all different examples, right? Like I said, everything from vehicle maintenance, handyman stuff, you know, DIY projects. And let's say you're wanting to like what I've done with livestock, right? You can go out there and you can buy a coop, a chicken coop, it's going to cost you probably a lot more money. Well, actually at this point, who knows with lumber prices, but at least price it out. You know, for me, it's way easier for me to go out there and run my own fencing and build my own hutches and cages. And it's something I've done so many times that, you know, I, I, sell, I can sell people tractors now because I have it down to a sign. So these templates and my templates, they're available online. You know, you can look at my YouTube channel, you can see how I've done it, but figure out these DIY, um, these different DIY projects, they're going to go a long way in helping you save more money and putting more cash in your pocket. Number five, be a producer and produce, uh, produce sustainable things, right? So for me, I think that, you know, gardening is great, right? It's a way to be a producer for yourself, 
raising animals, hunting, fishing, right? So let's say you don't want to go out and you don't want to, you know, raise animals, right? Let's say that's just not a thing for you. Well, try hunting, you know, try to get into hunting, try to get into fishing, because guess what? If you can bag, you know, a 2,000 pound elk, that's 2,000 pounds of elk that you didn't have to raise. <laughs> you just had to stalk and, and, and shoot. And so look at look at those as, as options, you know, and uh, get to, and this is huge, get to know your community, right? My brother, he is not a, he is not a farmer. He gardens, him and his wife are avid gardeners, but he does not want the hassle of livestock. And I get it, but he has really good friendships that he's made with farmers in the area. And so he gets a damage tag every single year to go get milk. And so if you know what damage tags are, you pretty much go to a farmer's open field where there's tons of elk. You take your sighted in scoped rifle, you know, and he has a 300 Winchester and he just sits there and boom, gets one. It's not hard. Open field and they're grazing because they're destroying his grazing fields that he uses for his friend uh, he uses for ranching. These are all different options out there. I mean, think about it. Damage tag. 50, 60 bucks in the state for 1,200 pounds of freezer meat, like meat that will go in the freezer, right? Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> okay. Next one, number six, turn your passions into a profit, right? Now, realistically, you can do this a bunch of different ways. We, I've taken my passion for homesteading and I have found a way to make money off it, right? Everything from selling livestock animals, selling their manure, selling eggs, right? Hides, all that stuff. Selling all different facets of, of livestock, their eggs, and then the things that come out of them. So I have found a way to turn my passion into profit. I've found a way to take the homestead and make the homestead pay for itself. It's great. Now, am I gonna live off that? Can I live off the funds that I make from it? No. But does it give me free money to, it gives me money to, the homestead takes care of itself and there's money left over to buy prepping items. I don't have to take money from my income or my wife's income to buy prepping items. I don't. The homestead takes care of that for me. So while the homestead won't allow me to live just off homesteading, it allows me to pay for my hobbies. I can't complain there. And it doesn't just have to be homesteading, right? A, a great, a great thing that you know, if you have a skill set in, say, you know, right now I know in, in our area, finding a good um, somebody that's good with sewing is huge. Somebody that can hem clothes is huge. I'm looking for somebody currently that can do that. Um, and so, if you have a passion for sewing or you have a passion for those types of artistic, you know applications, <clears throat> you can take that and you can sell it, right? Something that I do, right? I'm not anywhere near artistic, but I'm a military guy, 550 cord, I can do a lot with it. I make and I can leave you, you a link in the description box below of dog collars I've made with 550 cord. They're very great. They're very sturdy. People love them, right? So I'm able, like if I take a thousand feet of 550 cord, if I buy a thousand feet of it, you know, I can use 200 feet of it, 300 feet of it to make all these dog collars sell them and they pay themselves off. So now I have 700 feet of 550 cord that's 100% free because 300 feet of it paid itself off already. <laughs> so those are things to look at. Those are things to think about. You can turn your passions into a profit. You just gotta be, you know, be, you just gotta be creative, right? I know IT work, especially with everything going on with COVID and everybody's doing things digitally, teleconference-like, people are able to make money um, doing this. Um, a lot of most prepper influencers, they make uh, money from their views, from their channels to being monetized and by affiliating with some company that is able to send traffic that direction. That's not something that I feel comfortable doing necessarily, but it is a way that people are making money, right? And so I think it's important to look at those options. Now, am I telling everybody to start a YouTube channel? No, but you should, you can. Um, you know, just there are different ways that you can be um, smart about it. And there's different ways that you can get creative and that you can do that, okay? And number seven, give back to your family, friends, and community. Um, I found this to be huge. The relationships that I have formed from giving back to my community and giving back to my fellow man are, I mean, I can't put a price tag on it. I know you guys have seen videos 
my friends that I have, the people that are in my men's group, the people that are in my mag, I mean, they're amazing people. I can't outgive them. And I try. I try to outgive them, and I can't outgive them. Um, I can't tell you how amazing it is to, you know, be working on the homestead and having my, my neighbor come up with, you know, fresh Dungeness crab or fresh deer bark for Cove or fresh elk meat for my freezer. It's, it's humbling. It's a humbling experience, and I do everything I can to give back to them, whether it's, you know, fresh meat, um, helping them out, chickens, livestock. I, I go out of my way for these people because they go out of their way for me. And having that kind of community, that's going to help you with your bottom line. <clears throat> it's nice knowing that, you know, I go to my brother's house to help him out with something, and next thing you know, I'm coming home with 65 pounds of elk. That's nice. Um, it's nice to know that, you know, I go down to my neighbor's house and I give him, you know, some chickens and ducks for his little girls to, to have and uh, grow out. And next thing I know, he's coming up my driveway with some deer bark and meat for my freezer and for Cove. I mean, hey, it, it's a humbling experience. Like I said, I, I can't be, I couldn't be more, I couldn't be more happy. So these are seven things and I'll go through them real quick again. Number one, pay down debt. Interest rates, interest rates, interest rates. They don't give a fuck what's going on in the economy. They are still going to charge you every month for those interest rates, right? But they're going to compound. Number two, consumables, right? Empirical-based consumables. Know what you actually use and how much you actually use. And then look for, you know, buy those items in bulk. Look for off-brand products to save money. And also look for reusable options. That's going to be huge. Number three, focus on lifestyle habits. Examples include coffee purchases, eating out, entertainment, etc. Look at those things. Number four, you can save a lot of money by doing DIY projects. They go a long way. And just look on YouTube. You can figure out how to do everything from drywall to vehicle maintenance on YouTube. And they break it down step by step. So it couldn't be more easy. Number five, be your own producer and produce sustainably, right? Whether that's gardening, whether that's raising animals, whether that's hunting or fishing. Figure out a way, be creative. Like I said, 1,200 pounds of elk meat, I mean, at, for $60, for a $60 permit and, a, you know, a $2 bullet, I mean, geez, man, it's it's hard to beat. It, it's, it's really hard to beat. Number six, turn your passions into profit, whether that's homesteading, whether that's an arts and crafts type gig, um, whether that's, you know, d digitally here, like off YouTube, stuff like that. Find a way to turn your passion into a profit. It's going to help. Number seven, get back to your family, your friends, and your community. Like I said, I found that to be instrumental. It's huge. Like I said, I couldn't be more blessed to have the people around me that I have. So that's what I have for you guys. I hope this was useful. <clears throat> if you guys have any other suggestions, let me know. Leave them in the comment section below. If you think I got this completely wrong, you know the drill. Leave me a thumbs down and uh, give me an empirical rebuttal back. I hope you guys like this and found this to be um, useful. And as always, guys, long live the Republic.